We are here in Rheinklingen in the Swiss canton of Thurgau. Today we are using the FarmDroid field robot for the first time to sow sugar beet. Two of these machines are in active use in Switzerland and their purpose is to reduce manual labour for hoeing in the sugar beet. Normally we need about 100 hours of manual labour for this task, which means that as an organic farmer I cannot grow more than 1 to 2 hectares of sugar beet. That's why I'm looking for a better method. What's special about this robot is that it records the coordinates of each individual sugar beet planted sowing. The machine's sowing system is very precise. You can hear this clicking sound as it drives along. This sound is made by a slider that releases the seeds just 1 to 2 centimeters above the soil surface and thus ensures their precise positioning. Thanks to this precision and thanks to the fact that the machine can record the plant's coordinates, in two to three weeks we hope to be able, as a next step, to proceed with in-row weeding. That is weeding between the individual sugar beet plants. Today the time has come, the moment of truth has arrived. Does the machine really store the sugar beet plant's coordinates? When I look at the machine as it is working away, I can see that it does indeed remember the coordinates, so it is safe to say that the machine meets the special requirements. We can conduct in-row weed control in sugar beet without damaging or hoeing up the seedlings. This hoeing arm here is a fascinating component. It has a little motor that allows it to move back and forth. You can see the little hoe share here, which is moved into the row. But of course, this happens below the soil surface and is not visible when the robot is at work. Between the hoes, you can see these triangular wires. They cultivate the entire area between the rows. We adjusted them to move approximately one centimeter below the soil surface where they undercut the germinating weeds, resulting in a largely weed-free field. I first saw this machine at the Agri-Technica 2019 and was very impressed with the GPS-based technology. Solar panels are mounted on top of the robot, so it runs on solar energy. Surplus energy is then stored in four car batteries, which means that the machine can also work at night and in cloudy weather. Here you can see the receiver. We receive GPS data from the GLONASS and Galileo satellites, thus ensuring proper positioning in the field. The same thing happens at the front where two receivers ensure that the robot stays in the line. For the communication with the RTK base station, we have the GSM here, the modem that connects to the internet and allows us to reliably receive positional correction data every second. The steering is very simple. There is a little screen on it which we can record the field. Here we can instruct the machine to either sow or hoe. We can also set the in-row seed spacing, for example. There are two things where I can still see room for improvement. The first is line precision, i.e. the degree to which the machine moves across the field in a perfectly straight line. If there is some deviation, both during the sowing and the weeding process, then the plants will get hoed up. The second issue is seed spacing, i.e. seed positioning, which is also not yet entirely precise. There are still too many double sowings. If this seed spacing is not precise, we cannot precisely adjust the machine. As a result, we either end up with a larger area that is not weeded, or else we hoe up a greater number of sugar beet plants. However, I believe that we are very close to marketability. We still need to make some small improvements. We also need to work on better adapting the machine to sloping fields in mountainous Switzerland. The kind of slope we hear is almost the maximum possible at present. At maximum capacity, the machine can weed this 2 hectare field here in 10 hours. The machine, as it is equipped here, costs around 80,000 Swiss francs. It allows for the cultivation of a maximum of 20 hectares. It takes about a week to sow 20 hectares of sugar beet, and after that, weeding must start straight away. The robot can also be used for other crops. However, we haven't commenced any trials on that yet. Apart from sugar beet, it could certainly be used to sow beetroot, onions, or oil seed.
It is evident that the machine was developed in Denmark and not here in Switzerland. What I mean by that is firstly it has difficulties in heavy soils and secondly it has difficulties with stones which can jam the small hoe or the hoe may not be powerful enough at times. We have christened the machine Helga. The robot and I really have something of a relationship. While working in the latest field, it weeded, it sent me 55 text messages. It writes to me whenever it has a problem, and every time it does so, I have to go out to the field and tend to it. My current conclusions would be as follows. The technology does indeed meet the demands we place on it, but there are still a number of teething problems. The supervisory demands are still too high. There are still too many disruptions. However, we are very confident overall that this is a technology with a promising future.